On May 26 through 28, 2023, Sacred Word Revealed comes to Atlanta, Georgia. Purpose to unveil esoteric controversies. Conflicts abound in this final generation. After many millennia of deceptive propaganda replacing truth, that's why we must join together as a remnant to sharpen one another as iron sharpeneth iron. To test all things and to declare together openly, the Messiah is Adonai. Get your tickets now at sacredwordrevealed.com and join us for another exciting, rejuvenating, and challenging weekend of worship, fellowship, and discussion with the truth-seeking community. I'm your host, Zen Garcia. This is Secrets Revealed here on Truth Frequency Radio. And it's my great honor to have my good friend, author Dr. Joy Jeffries Pugh, to join us this evening to speak about her newest work, Beast Mark. Dr. Joy, are you there? Yes. Hi, Zian. How are you doing tonight? I'm doing well. And I'm really glad that we have this chance to get together and to speak about this before the upcoming conference, which uh, for those that don't know, sacredwordrevealed.com. We have coming up May 26th through 28th, the Sacred Word Revealed Conference here in Dunwoody, Georgia. And there are still tickets and rooms available for those of you that would like to join us, myself, Dr. Joy, my son, Zach Mason, Gary Wayne, Noel Hadley, Kent Smith, Brett Thomas, Zach Mason, and others uh, will be there to present and speak about our latest works, and also how it ties into the end times and current events. And so uh, certainly we'll be speaking about that this evening as your book does um, tie into a lot of what is going on with current events, Dr. Joy. But if you would, can you just share your social media, um, whatever it is you would like and where people go to contact you and to support you and your work? Yes, you can go to my web page, which is drjoy, D-R-J-O-Y-E dot com. That's www.drjoy with an E, D-R-J-O-Y-E dot com. Or you can follow me on Facebook, which is J-O-Y-E. The last name is Pew, P-U-G-H. You can friend me there and you can follow when I'm going to be on radio shows and actually click and listen because I post everything there for you to be able to click and listen to it either when it's being live Live or whether it's been an archive or whether it's been pre-recorded, you can still go back and listen at it. And on my webpage at drjoy.com, I have a submission form. And if you have any questions, I ask that you submit those to me so they can be sent to my email. And then I can answer them on my Dr. Joy's AMA, Ask Me Anything show that happens every last Monday night of every month on YouTube from 8 to 10 p.m. Eastern. And those are the best places to get a hold of me, to get in touch with me, to listen to my work and to know where I'm going to be. And of course, I'm very excited to have been asked to be able to uh, be a speaker at the conference that is there in Atlanta. I feel like this is going to be something that for all of you that are interested in understanding in times that the, the amount of uh, knowledge and research that the people that will be doing the presentations there at this at the conference for sacred word is outstanding and i think it's well worth the time energy and cost to be able to be there with us and really get a good handle on what the people like myself have really come to understand about this end of days and it's not something to play with but if you're really interested in wanting to know how you can protect you and your family and have more knowledge about that, uh, the the Sacred Word Conference is a place that you do not want to miss. And um, it will be, uh, uh, I think it's an all day, every day that is going on there uh, from probably early morning to late at night. And you do get a chance to visit with the uh, people who speak and 
and the books and things that we have there. So I encourage you if you are in this area or even if you're willing to fly into Atlanta, I mean, there's just so much opportunity there to enjoy the travel and to be there at Dunwoody. That's a very nice place and, and, and it's something that I think you will really enjoy. But more than in, more importantly is that if you are very interested in wanting to know about the end of days, this conference really will open your eyes as to what's really happening because that is what I can honestly say in working with Zen all these years is that our intent is to tell you the truth about what's happening. It's not politically correct. It's not something that falls outside of what God has told us is going to happen. We're trying to explain to you exactly what's going on. And to me, in this day and hour in which we live, truth is a very hard thing to find. But I can promise you that the things that you will hear and the people that you will meet and the, and the amount of research that they have done will be awe-inspiring. So mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to being a part of that, Zen, and cannot wait to see some of the people that have come to know over the years that have become great Facebook friends. And, um, right. you know, sometimes you just want to see a face and, and put a yeah. face with a name. So I'm hoping that I'll get to meet a lot of the people who've been following my research for a very long time, because it's really a wonderful thing to think that one day in heaven, you know, we'll be able to talk about all these things that we did, but I've always wanted to get, to, I guess, get a chance to meet people who have touched my life in, in various ways, including Joy and Justin. So I haven't had the chance to, to meet them face to face with you. I'm looking forward to get to see you again, because it seems like, you know, when Mel was alive, I was able to travel and uh, we did do a lot of videos going all the way back, I think, to 1986. And so it's going to be a really great pleasure to be able to be with you during those three days and to really have a chance to, to, to reconnect as far as old friends being able to sit down and look each other and, and to laugh mm -hmm. and to eat together. So I'm thanking, I'm thanking you again for all that you do and everything that you have done to allow me to get my words out as far as what God has given me all these years to give to the people that are willing to listen about what is really going on. So thank you. And I look forward to being a part of that. And, and like I say, everybody that's listening, please take time to look into the conference. I think you will be very, very pleased with everything that will be done there uh, at, at Dunwoody. And um, at my website or at Sacred Word, you can always click on. That's where my books and everything are there at my website. It'll take you right over to the Sacred Word uh, website that you can order the books. And I know that Beast Mark is a pre-order that will be released uh, in May. And uh, very excited about to be able to talk about that tonight, Zen. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Oh, yes, no problem at all. And uh, just so you know, Dr. Joy, we did... Uh get the preview print copies in today so yay uh, and have justin <laughs> send those down to you and so you'll have them you know pretty immediate and at least you'll have those versions with you and uh and i still believe there you know will be time uh if we expedite that you can get and have some uh for the conference but it all depends on the printing you know and because sometimes they take longer Especially yes, I pray that that's going to happen. I just keep praying that that's gonna, yeah. that's going to be the thing because I feel like that is something that if you can get your hands on it and look at it, just makes it so much more, um, yeah. I guess, it, real. So I'm looking forward to all of this mm -hmm. so much, mm -hmm. and I hope they'll be able to do it for us then. Yes, uh, well, we're we're going to shoot for that because I know that you've been working really hard to to make that happen, and I I myself uh, as well with the the new two big set that I've been working on, but um, yeah, very, very exciting and uh, looking forward. It's been a while. Um, I do remember also, Dr. Joy, I was going to ask you if you remember this, but um, we had a friend, Sheila Broden, who was setting up a conference in California and uh, there was a number of, you know, really big authors and speakers that were already lined up and, then when they found out that you and I had been invited, they all backed out. Um, I don't know if you remember all that, but yes. it seems crazy, you know, to me now looking back at all that and seeing how far things have come. But yeah, just crazy. The 
the way that we have been ostracized for so long, you know, by uh, even a lot of alternative truth people, it's just very strange. Well, when you talk about the things that we've had to talk about for so long, there's a lot of people who had never really, I think, sat down to really look at what Scripture is really saying. And that was one thing that when we first got together, I came at what I had found from a total biblical you know, King James, everything right. directly spot on. And you came from another area. But what happened was, is that it boxed everybody in because it's like when I use the science in my research, it's like I'm, I'm making sure that you understand this is the only way. There's not another alternative. And I guess that comes from the years of believing that I, my father wanted me to be an attorney. And so when I write everything, I write it as if I'm giving this presentation to a jury and I've got every avenue covered. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what has been the amazing thing about what you and I have done together for all these years is that we brought it to the table in such a fashion that you cannot deny that it's the truth. Because right. lots of times if you don't have all your bases covered and some people will say, oh, well, don't go outside, you know, biblical texts and don't do this. And, but if you can use outside biblical texts to prove what the Bible is l- literally saying and you can use science to prove what the Bible is saying, it just means you've got more resources to exactly. prove exactly what has been said and can prove that what's been said is going to happen like it's been said. So that's kind of around the world and back, but it's the truth. You box it in and there is nothing else out there. In other words, the case is solid. And when presented to people, you know, I I present it to the people who read it. They're the jurors, you know, they're the ones that I'm giving this to, to look at it. And I've always encouraged this. If you can find a loophole, if you can find something that I haven't touched, you know, on in something, I want to know about it because I'm not wanting anything to slip by. I want to be able to put it all together, a big puzzle and show you exactly how it's going to happen. And I fully believe the two and a half years that I have worked on this be smart to bring it to this particular time period in our lives, that it will literally change your life. It is riveting. There's a lot of information in there that's not being given across the world. And I feel like when you read this book, it's going to really open your eyes about everything that's going to happen and give you the understanding how an Antichrist can really put in a beast situation and have a mark and really control us. And telling you right now that technology is available it's not something in the future this is a book for right now and um and i'm excited about it because i know that god would not have led me to have spent the number of hours and days that he gave me to do this that there was a reason and i'm going to tell you zen and you know this Whenever you expose Satan, he comes at you with everything he can destroy you with. And, you know, my life for the two and a half years that I have been under conviction to do this book has been a consistent hit me, hit me, (laughs) try to bring me to my knees to keep it from happening. So, yes, I feel like when that happens. That's when you know you're on the road to something that's going to expose something that Satan does not want. And um, and it was really a relief to finally get it out of my hands and sent to you so that that process that he could not continue to just manifest against uh, my work in every aspect. And of course, my best friend. She's she's been through several books with me and she can honestly vouch. She goes, if I did not know you, she says, I could not believe the things that can happen to you in just a day's time when you're trying to do the, the will of God. Yeah. And so, I, you know, I have confirmation of people that are around me that are starting to understand that when you step out to do the work of the Lord, it is not a bed of roses. In fact, you know, Satan does not like to, for people to know the truth. And the more that you and I have done that, you felt that presence, too, that, you know, um, we can't be possessed by a demon, but boy, can we be oppressed by them yep. and it's and it's, it is an oppression 
And mm-hmm. so I'm thankful. I'm I'm praying that God's going to get this book ready so that it's you know available at the conference and people can get a copy and that I can sign it for them while they're there and that kind of thing. So that's that's what I've got my prayer in, that it was a lot of work to get it to the point that it was. And I tell you, if Satan did not try to stop that, woo. But anyway, I'm going to believe that we're going to have it there and to be ready to go. So thank you for, for, for allowing me to be able to do this, Zen. Thank you very much. Oh, it's my great honor, Dr. Joy, because um, you and I, we've been confirming witness for each other and as you said you have come from the the study of the bloodlines and the enmity and the uh the war between the wheat and the tares the goat and the sheep and um for us to expose what had occurred in the garden with uh, the beguilement of eve and how this was uh sexual in nature and how it led to cain as being the progenitor of this particular bloodline, their connection to the elites even of today and the ongoing war, let both grow together until the time of the end. Um, It's been invaluable even to my work. And I've covered it from, you know, a lot of the extra biblical texts and unifying those two themes out of the mouths of two or three witnesses, shall the truth be established. And Uh, My other good friend, Brett Thomas, also uh, writing The Way of Cain. He covers a a lot of this information in great detail as well. But uh, you and I, we were like the first uh, out there and speaking on these things. And, you know, not, you know, just with the conference and people backing out, but we've dealt with a lot of angst. And um, our message has been contrary to what they teach in the mainstream, but for people that have spent the time to look into and examine the things that we say, it's undeniable that what we are covering and talking about is without a doubt truth, Uh, even with regard to the, you know, the punishments and how prophetic they were in Genesis uh, 3, 14 and onwards with, you know, I'm going to put enmity between your seed and the woman's. Um, and then how Adam would have to work the soil to, to bring forth sustenance to feed his future progeny, the separation of the genealogies in Genesis 4 and 5. All these things just would not make sense. The exclusion of Cain from um, the Messiah's bloodline in Luke chapter 3. I mean, so much. Um, and people just would not understand. It's a it's a skeleton key. And then, you know, all the other things that we've been writing about and covering the fallen angels and giants and your extraordinary work on the coming of the Antichrist and all of that. And so um, I'm just going to turn it over to you, Dr. Joyce, so you can speak about the chapters and, you know, the focus of your new book and sure. how it ties into you all of the other things that we've been speaking about all these years. Well, you know, there's a, there's a part of my life that I feel like there have been people that have been here to really help me get to the point of where God needs for me to be to do things. And I don't ever want to feel like that. I don't want to say thank you to some very special people. And I do acknowledge them in my dedication. But to start off tonight, I really want to say a very special thanks to some people that really helped me during this particular time in my life to get this this work done for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And the first being my very best friend, Tanya, a very best friend, Freddie, a very good friend, Iris, very good friend, Keith, Gay, who is my sister, Vicki, my best friend throughout life, Ted, and then, of course, I have three cats that are actually four cats that really <laughs> were there <laughs> to help lift me up and anybody that knows my animals and how I feel about animals, they are a part of something that gets you through a lot of very sad times, tearful yeah. days and bring happiness. And, and their names are Kissy, Miss Kitty, Tips and Rebel. And then of course, Zen, you, Justin and Joy. And I want to thank all of you that if you're listening tonight, 
I want you to know that I feel like that God puts you in my life to make sure that this work comes out for him. So, you know, I look at Proverbs 18, 15, and it says the heart of the discerning acquires knowledge for the ears of the wise seek it out. And that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction, according to Proverbs 1, 7. In Psalms 119, 66, it says, teach me knowledge and good judgment, for I trust your commands. And that is the thing is that we have got to be willing to look to what God is actually showing us. And we don't need to suffer because of our lack of knowledge. And I fully believe that he has used me throughout my entire life to be able to stand strong at the end of days to explain to you what is happening so that you don't lack the knowledge to understand the choices that you have and how vital they are to your greatest asset, and that is your soul. So I want to kind of just start, first of all, I'm going to go through and just tell you about the table of contents and give you some ideas of what some of these things sound like that you're going to be reading about. And then I'm going to kind of give you a quick synopsis of it and then kind of go into some details about some of the things that I feel like are very, very good, Zen, if that's okay. Uh, yes, please. Uh, just know, Dr. Joy, that in like six minutes, we'll have our first break. So. Okay. On the table of contents, I start off to really explain to you what the pineal gland is all about. And so I'm going to give you a little chapter 101 like we had in college, welcoming you to understand the spiritual rim and what the pineal gland is all about. Then I'm going to explain to you what it was like to have a release of plagues in our country and what that meant to the change and what was happening as far as the beginning of an apocalypse that was actually set in stone and in the skies that matched the Gothic cathedrals on July the 28th of 2019. It was important for me to also include about the Holy Shroud of Turin and that it is the actual authentic burial cloth of Jesus. And it's very important that you understand that it is real. And then the other thing is I wanted to be able to explain to you what it means in the new Genesis to be mingled and what the wheat and tares are all about. Because only in that can you understand that Satan is going to use a spiritual deception that will go after your personal holy of holies that actually exist in your head. He is an attempt to evil being to attack you in such a way that it produces something that is called spiritual adultery and whoredom if you allow him to take the role of sitting on your holy of holies altar in your head. This explains why the dragon seed came into the world in Genesis, how they have absolutely infiltrated this world as the wheat and tares, and that the serpent has his own resonance, his own vibration. And so that will give you kind of an understanding of why the orbit of the dragon and how he has proceeded across this planet, how he has existed from day one. I explained to you about the astrobiology that NASA is going to release because this will only give credence to what Satan is going to use as far as his fallen angels in the end of days. The intent of Satan is to really breach your holy transmission to God. That means he's going to go after retuning all of humanity. With that, and for you to understand that, I have to include the blood trails of the dragon kings that go all the way back to Egypt. When you get an understanding of this is something that's been going on since the beginning, then you can understand how serious all of this is and how it's playing out in the days in which we live. Satan has wanted to remotely control mankind. And so the ability to program mankind's brain is going to become a reality and is capable right now with the technology that we have. The intent is to go after your pineal gland. It is your mind's eye. And I show you in several of the chapters about that, how and why God had placed it there and why he will seal it for the 144,000 that will be left after the catching away. There is truly third eye illumination, even though the new ages have always acted like it is for your benefit to find the God within. But I'm going to show you how false information and paganism has taken away your knowledge that you should have known about. You, be, you actually have a DNA 
that is vibrating and it is your personal song. No one else has it. To be able to be a part of spiritual communion, that personal song is how you connect to the Father. But Satan's goal is to permanently remove you from being able to have God on your throne and your connection to him from your mercy seat. The way that he does that is through his sounds. And I call that particular chapter sounds of Satan because the human pine cone, which is actually what it's been called, is actually the pineal gland. Whenever you do any kind of resonance, including sexual resonance, it actually, it actually changes mankind's desires. And people don't even realize when they're being programmed. And so I try to explain that so you can understand how Satan is actually going to sear your conscience. And that is allowing him to get in and occupy the territory that's in your brain. Whenever that happens and it gets so bad here on this earth, I explain how Christ's bride is going to be airlifted away from the adder and the way that he has controlled the other people that will be left here. Then I take you into the understanding of the theory of human consciousness because so many people do not understand consciousness. I explain also how Nimrod's Tower of Babel shows you that there is a unified collective consciousness that can be manifested within the human brains of humanity. Okay, Dr. Joy, hold on. We'll be right back. On May 26 through 28, 2023, Sacred Word Revealed comes to Atlanta, Georgia. Purpose to unveil esoteric controversies. Conflicts abound in this final generation. After many millennia of deceptive propaganda replacing truth, that's why we must join together as a remnant to sharpen one another as iron sharpeneth iron. To test all things and to declare together openly, the Messiah is Adonai. Get your tickets now at sacredwordrevealed.com and join us for another exciting, rejuvenating, and challenging weekend of worship, fellowship, and discussion with the truth-seeking community. When Justin and I found out we were having a little girl, we named her Eliana and started dreaming of what life would be like with her, where we would take her, what we would teach her, and of course, what we would read to her. One day we walked around a bookstore looking for books we might want for her and found nothing. So we started brainstorming what exactly we would want. 
Even from a young age, we wanted her to know and understand the heart of God and hidden truths that are in ancient biblical manuscripts like the Book of Enoch, and the idea of the Prophecy for Children series was born. Justin got hard to work and Praise Yah released the Prophecy for Children series. We are grateful for the support and amazing feedback from others who have been wanting the same for their children. With our newest addition to the family, Ezra, we also added Enoch's judgment of the giants to this prophecy series. We're excited to keep writing books for our children to share with our truth-seeking family. To order these books today, please check out sacredwordpublishing.com slash collections slash children's dash store. friends, thank you for joining us this evening. I'm your host, Zen Garcia. Coordinate them all and connect them all upon humanity like they did back in the Tower of Babel where it was one mind, one accord. And I take you into the understanding of Gnosticism and so that you can get a great understanding of what Luciferian enlightenment is all about because those alchemical black arts are very sacred and they were taught to everyone that was in the early stages, the development as far as before the Egyptians and right after Noah's flood. I really try to make it understood how it's moved through history by showing you who has been a part of that and how the brainwashing has occurred from those days. And so I give some information on the Order of the Knights Templar, the Rosy Cross of the Rosicrucians, as well as Rawlsons chapitals, crown, chakra, and how the Gothic cathedrals throughout Europe have been used to illuminate men throughout history to be able to bring to the fruition of what Satan has wanted to happen within a time frame. These secrets are also shown to be a part of Freemasonry, and this is why it was important for me to explain about the beehive and why the queen bee is so important and how her hive cannot thrive unless she is there because the other worker bees are all connected by a harmonic resonance that links them together to do the work of the queen bee. And luminescence, I try to show you about what that's, it's kind of a new uh, theory, but luminescence will be discussed, as well as Hitler's Nazi elites. There was a lot of hidden military experiments, including MK Ultra, that were used to be able to manifest capability of remote control of the brain, as well as being able to use transcendental meditation and other types of psychedelic drugs like DMT, even LSD. So it's important to understand how important this was to certain uh, countries and certain governments. And I think that this explains a lot about how and why uh, Hitler was trying to do, especially the um, the DNA, genetics, and also understand the capability of the mind remotely being controlled. Using something called Tesla technology, the Earth's natural currents that are electromagnetic in nature are ley lines that run all over this planet. And so I felt like that was important for you to understand that to get the sole understanding of how electromagnetic uh, frequency waves have a play in connecting humanity. This meant that I had to show you some things about how nanotechnology actually works, which actually goes into a little bit of psychosurgery, because I want you to be able to see how the, the people behind the satanic push to control humanity are going to breach your internal communications. And it's going to use the physioelectricity of the pineal gland crystals. 
And so there's a lot of science involved in this, but I really do spell it out in great detail so that if it's all new terminology to you and science to you, that you will not have to go look for other books or try to look it up or do anything. I try to put everything in in the book so that you wouldn't have to leave the book to go try to find out or try to get a better understanding. I'm really explaining it to you whether you're a 12 year old reading this or a Ph.D., what I wanted to show is that some of the things that we have allowed to be put in our bodies have been designed to kill us and that the bioweapons that have been used, used in things to go after the DNA, have been a way to push toward the effort of transhumanism. And so I expose the World Economic Forum, Klaus Schwab. Uh, all of the things that Elon Musk with Neuralink, Starlink have been utilizing in their technology to be able to push mankind toward a po- what we call a post-human, which is a transgenic individual. This is going to be uh, accomplished using biocoded directed energy. And so I do uh, go into detail about 5G and 6G technology and how Serco has been very instrumental in making some of that happen because things like the World Health Organization, as far as identification passports, those will play a huge role in this connecting of human data, as well as cryptocurrency, total, uh, totalism. And then I wanted to go into the understanding about how the religions would be connected into all this. And so there's information in there on the human fraternity, the 2019 document on human fraternity that is pushing toward a unification of religions under the Abrahamic family house that has been built and how the United Nations Climate Change Conference has been utilized to make all of that uh, be a part of a one-world government and a one-world economic setup, as well as a one-world religion. In that, you will find information on King Charles and what his desire as defender of the face, F-A-I-T-H-S, what that means because it's a total deviation from anything that Britain has ever done in the royal family. And I tie that to Earthshot, which is a global environmental changes that Prince William is very involved with that is going to uh, unify and connect some of the biggest suppliers that move product throughout our country, DP World included, as well as the United Nations Sustainability Development Goals and how all of that is for a great human reset. They're calling it the Great Reset and the impact of 2030, which is an environmental, social, and governance, ESG, that is being implemented right now under your nose if you're not aware of it. All of this began with Abraham Accords Peace Plan and now how that is moving itself into uh, setting up a European bloc against an Asian bloc. I go into the details of what's really happening in Russia and Ukraine and how that is setting the stage for the coming Antichrist, the beast. The G7 and the D10, which is a plot that I believe has been pushed against Russia and China because they are the kings of the East, and how the giants Gog and Magog are going to form an alliance and that the Eastern Europe versus the Asian bloc will be the two entities that really bring everything together into a battle of Armageddon. When I bring you to that point, then I'm going to show you how the human biofield with the pineal crystals and the DNA resonance that's going on is going to unify all of humanity together into a post-human world and that how it relates to the beast mark and explain to you that it is your choice. You will not be held down. You will not be forced to take it. It will be your choice. At the same time, I'm going to explain to you the signs of the tribulation that are happening now and have been happening leading up to this particular day that we're living in and what the signs of the tribulation will be in the next coming years. Also, I'm going to go into great detail about what it means to have an eternal resurrected body because every person that has ever been born whether they go to heaven or hell will end up in resurrected bodies to stand judgment before the great white throne of god at the end i I share with you an old song that i wrote when i was 13 years old called old beggar that i feel like that god laid on my heart as a young girl and that is a song that is on my album before time 
stops. It is my CD that has that on that. But I wrote that when I was 13 years old. And to me, it sums up the choice that you have got to make and what's going to happen at the very end of time. So that's kind of the the way in which the chapters are laid out and how I give you the information, building on each particular subject so that you don't start out com- totally confused. I'm going to just build and build and build. So it's always best in my work to read the first page and then proceed every page to the end. If you go and either and read the end, you're never going to get the trueness of how I came to that conclusion. It's no different than reading the Bible. To understand the end of the Bible, you have to start in Genesis. You literally have to start in Genesis to get the whole picture. With my work and all my other books, it's the same way. To get the whole picture in a pattern as if it all comes together like a puzzle. You will, at the end of the book, be able to see it all together, just like I've been given that information. But I feel like, by God, to be able to share it and have you to understand it. One of the first things when I sat down to, I feel like God inspired me to about writing this book. I was sitting there one night and he always seems to give me these thoughts, not thoughts that I could have been thinking about, not thoughts that I was pondering. It just comes to me. And when this thought came to me, this is how this book began. I say in the introduction, and I'm going to read it to you so you get a really understanding of how God gave me this book and what his intent was. And this is what it says. Does it not stand to reason that if we invent anything, that we alone have a direct connection to our invention? For example, computer program, they actually invent key codes to communicate with their software. Again, does it not stand to reason that if we invent anything, that we alone have a direct connection to our invention? Nobody that actually invents anything does not always have the total control over what you invent because it's your invention. So it only stands to reason that there is always a direct connection to you and whatever you invent. The intent is to keep anyone else from being able to hack your system, especially if you're a computer programmer and you invent key codes to communicate with your software. Would Creator God have made mankind in His image and not built inside man a way to communicate with Him? No computer programmer would make a product He could not communicate with. But as good as computer programmers are, sometimes their codes can be hacked by those wishing to take control away from the original inventor and manipulate or control the software illegally for their evil agenda. This is an example of what my research is going to reveal. Creator God as mankind's maker, built a transmitter and receiver gland inside of our heads. That gland is called the pineal gland. It acts like a transistor radio that receives and transmits electromagnetic waves so that Creator God knows every fault and every deed that you do. It was Satan's goal as the tree of knowledge of good and evil in the midst of the Garden of Eden to hack that divine connection, thereby making it a party line that he could infiltrate. We as humans are driven internally by our conscience. It is an inner feeling or voice that acts as a guide to righteousness or wrongness and our behavior, if we do well, we have a good conscience, but if we do badly, we have a guilty conscience. This means regardless of whether or not you have been a churchgoer or live on a desert island, that your conscience works and lets you know whether you are doing good or evil. 
Innocence is lost once you know the difference between good and evil. The pineal gland hormones are responsible for your movement from childhood to adulthood. God created Adam and Eve to have freedom of choice. They were not created as robots. Throughout scripture, mankind is warned to never mix. We were to be pure in thought and deed. The Bible hates war done and adultery and mixing of opposites. These are the things that Satan calls to have it in the Garden of Eden by getting Eve and Adam to team totally into him and not God. In other words, they wanted him to be totally into him and really turn away from God. Everything in God's creation is singing. Everything has its own frequency. Your DNA is playing your unique song given to you by God. It is more than your fingerprint or even an iris scan in determining and identifying who you are. God, as conductor of the universe and creation software manager, can see and hear every song that is singing in all of his creation. If a string is out of tune in an orchestra, a good conductor immediately notices it. If the software fails, a good computer programmer knows where the problem is. Satan was created with power of the air. He lives in the frequency of Earth's electromagnetic ley lines. That is why these ley lines are called dragon lines and they connect all megalithic sites worldwide together. Where these ley lines cross are known as dragon nodes and are oracle sites of which can allow mediums to receive messages from the spiritual realm. When you manipulate what God created to something that was not supposed to be utilized in that way, Satan is always the culprit of that manipulation. God warned mankind to stay clear of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. But Satan was so beguiling, playing like he was creator God, that Adam and Eve fell into his trap. Satan's quest to infiltrate the pineal glands of humanity can be seen in pagan architecture worldwide. It is symbolized as a pine cone on top of a staff representing mankind's spine. Pagan architecture also puts a snake or two snakes intertwined, crawling up the spine, going after the pineal gland. Such clearly indicates Satan's desire to control the mind. Satan's quest has gone from enticing individuals to become enlightened through Luciferian light to the final frontier of him gaining control over humanity's connection to God. We are in the final days when Satan is going to connect all humanity through mass and forced enslavement using the pineal gland. This will ensure the Antichrist will have unlimited power by using harmonic resonance to remotely control mankind at the flip of a switch. The human body cannot biologically fight an outside force that is controlling it from a distance. Electromagnetic frequency waves speed up your heart, make you fear, hallucinate, and even cause you to have voices in your head, and you cannot stop it. God never planned to use this gland to make you into a robot or have his children connected to Satan's universal collective consciousness. Instead, God designed it to commune with him, receive instruction from the Holy Spirit, choose to do good when your conscience told you to do good, and repent when you were bad. But Satan, as computer hacker of mankind, will massively attempt to hack the pineal glands to gain worldwide control. He's been controlling rulers and kingdoms of the world for a long time. Now he's after each person's pineal gland. His intent is to sear mankind's moral consciousness. Then our sense of knowing right from wrong is destroyed and we become his slave, his robot. So Satan is going to use enticements, illumination, and promises of alchemy to provide a false sense of being able to live forever in a synthetic body attached to artificial intelligence. For years, Satan has been numbing the pineal gland down using fluoride, chemicals, food additives, and drugs, as well as electromagnetic frequencies. Technology is already in place using Starlink satellites developed by Elon Musk. 
to beam and receive electromagnetic low-frequency waves. These waves connect directly to artificial intelligence, and a computer brain interface will one day control the pineal glands anywhere in the world. We are the final generation. Satan is forcing universal collective consciousness on humanity like bees in a hive. His plans to control people like worker bees are controlled by a queen bee over her own hive. Worker bees do not have free will. Instead, they do the queen's entire bidding, and if she dies, they die. The, ba- the actual pagan beehive symbol represents a return to the Tower of Babel. Although God hardwired us so we could commune with him, Satan is a hacker. Just like hardware, wallets are designed to store cryptocurrency keys offline. They still have the risk of being compromised by fizing scams. Satan's just like those scammers, attempting to trick users into giving him the private keys to their wallets. What keys are you giving Satan right now that is allowing him to hack your connection to creator God and steal your divine inheritance? Take note. What you're about to read in this book will give you and tell you how to save your soul over Satan ruling this earth. We are living right now in enemy-occupied territory. Our DNA is resonating and our pineal gland is broadcasting and receiving. This means your most important asset is your soul. And my intent with this book is to teach you how to guard it with your life. So that kind of gives you an idea, Zen, of how God brought this thought process to my mind. And then as I started working through it, how the pineal gland is, what it is, how it functions, and how vital it is to know about something that biologically is connected to our creator because we were designed in his image. Right. Yeah, absolutely. That is... uh... Awesome, Dr. Joy. And um, for people that don't know what the pineal gland is, can you uh, talk about its connections with the the third eye just to, you know, con- you know, bring that forth? Because a lot of people understand about like the new age and the meditation and how people are trying to raise the serpent up the spine and all that. And um, And if you would just talk a bit uh, a bit about why people should be weary uh, about doing those kind of things as well and the kind of doorways that can open up uh, unexpectedly and and also know dr joe that we'll be at our next break in about five minutes okay the the thing about the pineal gland is this in the center of your forehead and in the eastern religions it was called the um the third eye In lizards, we have always known that that third eye was a workable eye. And so in humans, that eye exists in your forehead in the same place. And if you cross-section the brain, you can see that it looks like actually the Ark of the Covenant with the cherub actual wings going over the mercy seat where actually the pineal gland kind of is located at. This has been something that the Eastern religions have always said was the connecting factor between the soul, but they used it to raise the serpent up the spine, talking about the chakras in the body. And they would bring the serpent up the spine to sit in the Holy of Holies. And that is where you have to be so careful about what you are allowing into your mind, because if you allow the serpent to come up your spine or to be in and if you allow him to come into your life or be influenced by evil, you allow the serpent to sit on your most most holy of holies, and that is in your head. We were designed to be like the temple of God. Jesus himself said that when he died, he was going to raise his temple up in three days. And, of course, the Pharisees and Sadducees mm-hmm. thought, well, what is that? You know, how could he do that in 40 40- 40 days, you know, or or whatever, because it took them 40 years to be able to build the temple. He couldn't raise it up in three days. He, I mean, it took him 40 years to build the temple. So he was really telling them that it was his body and his body was a temple. So that's where this is all falling into understanding that our body is in the image of God and that 
we are a temple. And if we are a temple, we have a holy of holies in our head where the top of the altar was inside where the priest would go and put uh, the blood on the mercy seat for repentance and that kind of thing. So if you look at how it's drawn out and you see how when you cross section these brains and you can see how that is like the cherub um, that are there over the ark. Uh, of the covenant, when you look at what the brain hemispheres look like and you see that the penile gland sits right there, just the same place, it is just absolutely amazing to know that Christ said, you know, I'm going to raise this up in three days. And they were like, oh, you can't do that. It took us 40 years to build a temple. But in three days, he brought his body back out of that tomb and it was alive. So the fact is, we are in his image. That means that we are a temple, and that means our Holy of Holies are in this area that really is just like the Ark of the Covenant. So that is why the pagan religions always said that there was a connection for illumination, because what they did, they went against what God tells you not to do. In Matthew 5.30, it says, If thy right hand is sin, thee, cut it off. It's better to enter to God's kingdom with only one hand than to suffer the second death. Repentance is necessary to enter into heaven. If you try to go through any other way to get in to God's light, and understanding other than acknowledging him as your Lord and Savior and doing it that way instead of doing meditations and trying to put your body into a vibratory state that brings about a change in your physical uh, uh, resonance to, in order to get illumination. It's like Satan has taught these pagans that if they will cause their bodies to get into a certain vibratory state and change the very vibration of their human body, that they will have an illuminating experience. And that's why it's really important because your body affects your pineal gland. All right. Hold on, everybody. And we will see you right back for the second half. This, this, this is iHeartRadio. iHeartRadio. iHeartRadio makes you want to move. When you have a great melody, a song plays forever. Instantly connected. I love it when the beat goes. Did you know you can listen to Truth Frequency Radio on iHeartRadio? Just download the app to your smart car, smartphone, or smart TV and get the best of TFR wherever you are. iHeartRadio. I'll see you there. So, you love talk radio, then you'll love TalkStreamLive.com. TalkStream Live is always on, 24-7, with the best streaming talk shows. Find your favorite talkers and discover some new ones. On May 26 through 28, 2023, Sacred Word Revealed comes to Atlanta, Georgia. Purpose to unveil esoteric controversies. Conflicts abound in this final generation. After many millennia of deceptive propaganda replacing truth, that's why we must join together as a remnant to sharpen one another as iron sharpeneth iron. To test all things and to declare together openly the Messiah is Adonai. Get your tickets now at sacredwordrevealed.com and join us for another exciting, rejuvenating, and challenging weekend of worship, fellowship, and discussion with the truth-seeking community. Your partnership with Sacred Word Publishing goes further than the publishing of ancient manuscripts and weekly video content. You also make a huge impact across the earth in orphanages in Myanmar, India, Uganda, and Kenya. Your support is crucial for the development of the Ecclesia of Real Truth Seekers. We thank you for joining us in hosting Secrets Revealed, 
Momentary Zen, The Digital Readers Club, Ask Me Anything series, and other shows that have helped lead so many to the truth of salvation. Become even more involved? Please visit patreon.com slash sacredwordpublishing where you can partake in exclusive, interactive, patron-only content and help us continue shining the light of love in this darkened world. about her new book be smart and going through the chapters and the titles and the content and also um she will be presenting on this information at the sacred word revealed conference which is coming up may 26th through the 28th and for those of you that can please do join us um there's still rooms and space available just go to sacredwordrevealed.com find out information there's the list of the presenters the speakers and the authors that will be joining us and uh, we made a point to have time in between for fellowship Um, last time we kind of ran everything all together and the people wanted more time to communicate and fellowship and have breaks and so we did listen and that has been planned for and so there will be plenty of time for fellowship and conversation breaking bread sharing meal and hug and things like that and so um it's going to be an awesome time hopefully we'll see you there dr joy Yes, I'm looking so forward to being a part of that, Zen. So I hope everybody will um, think about really coming and and being a part of this because I feel like it's really needed right now since we are living in the end of days. Um, I was talking a little bit about um, the pineal gland itself. and, And one of the things that's most important is that the crystals in the pineal gland actually play a a very major role in electromagnetic transduction. And the pineal gland really is a neuroendocrine transducer, and it produces melatonin. And that melatonin is what controls the circadian rhythms in the human body. If you look at a neuroendocrine transducer as a gland, converting actually one form of energy into a signal, and then another form of energy, like it it actually does just like an electronic device. So in other words, this thing within our body is behaving like a microphone or a loudspeaker or a light bulb or anything like that that has an antenna with it. If you look at an antenna, you understand that it is a specialized transducer, and that is what converts radio frequency fields into actually alternating current, our AC current. So I was looking at how this would be able to be able to be used. And when you look at the actual biomineralization of the small crystals in the human pineal gland, you find that they are responsible for the electromagnetical biological and transduction that's being produced in that pineal gland because of its uh, properties that are uh, very uh, physioelectric. And so when looking at that and you learn that how that comes about is this production and detection of sound 
and you know in in um in scripture we're always taught that how did the earth come to be or how did the universe you know get into existence or how did god create everything if you remember it was that god spoke so sound has been a very big thing so if you look at any kind of transducer can convert electrical signals into pressure waves, which are sound. So this was really important because the microcrystals in the pineal gland, they are actually made out of a calcite. And it is a pure type of calcite with a um, kind of like a, a calcium carbonate crystal. It, it looks a lot like quartz. And so if you go back and I was looking at how that could connect and show you the similarities between what's in our head, it's interesting that the cellular te- telecommunication, actually our cell phones, use electromagnetic fields. And those fields can and do directly affect the pineal gland because of its electrical nature. And I can remember when I first started talking about this years ago, I think when I was working on the book Beguiled right after the book Eden that I did, I was telling people, do not put cell phones next to your brain. You know, there was a big thing that that there was a lot of brain cancer that started happening during those years. And then they tried to say, well, it didn't have anything to do. But electromagnetic fields, I showed back then in, in the work that I did in, in my book, Eating the Knowledge of Good and Evil 666 and the Beguile series, that there was a connection to something. And, and the more I've studied it now and understand that the pineal glands, you know, physiochemical uh, piezoelectric properties actually produce an electromagnetic transduction that's going on. So you've got these electromagnetic waves that are for telecommunications directly affecting the pineal gland and can indirectly connect to it because we've got microcrystals in our head. So when you start putting in digital networks and you use like power mobile devices utilizing speech that's coded, and that you do this capability to form a, you know, a cellular network out there, like in a single system, that type of really open base transceiver station kind of capability that's out there for your cell phones can interface with the human pineal gland's internal system. And it can make it broadcast better as a trans (laughs) receiver and a transmitter which is self-contained in our heads, just like a cellular network connects to your phone. So when I realized that we are actually walking antennas with transmission and transreceiving capability using the crystals of this calcite in the pineal gland that they can be excited using lasers that generate this harmonic resonance, that is the same thing is frequency doubling in radio communications. So when you see that you go, Oh my gosh, you know, we have got a crystal that's in our head along with the crystals that are in our ear. They can actually be excited in the same frequency range of electromagnetic waves as cellular phones. No different. So where people were saying you know, that nothing was being uh, a result of holding a cell phone up to your head. When you put too many things close like that and they're doing the same thing, that's why you're getting a lot of bad situations from having a cell phone up next to something that's already in your head that is an antenna itself that's transmitting and receiving very serious situations. So when I started looking at the interaction between the electromagnetic frequency and how it can change your internal vibration and then alter the biological effect of the human body. Oh my gosh, you know, communication using crystal vibration, you can take and activate the entire pineal gland from outside the body, just like you can remote control and produce biological effects on the human body at a distance. Because what you're doing is you're using mechanical stimulations in a microwave wave that directly affects your uh, physical um, response in your body. So electromagnetic waves do and feels directly affect the human body. And if you look at the evidence that the human biofuel is created by DNA resonance, in other words, manipulation of that biofuel can produce these abnormalities and actually produce changes in the human body. And I think that was the thing that was so engrossing to me was that DNA 
it's one of the most harmoniously structured biomolecules in the entire body. So if all those cells are communicating with each other through a biofuel, and then you modify in the DNA a change in the human biofuel using these electromagnetic waves, you change the very gene expressions in the human body. But at the same time, with the various kind of frequencies of that electromagnetic wave affecting the biofuel, then anything can be manipulated in the DNA of the human body. And if you can do that and use like even just the base pairs of the DNA because they are absolutely um, vibrating at a frequency in a megahertz that uh, will produce like certain changes in the chains of DNA. Just imagine what could be broadcast over just cell towers at any time if our DNA is doing the same thing of conducting whatever is happening within our building blocks of our bodies and making the proteins do whatever, then that's a little network going on within your human body. But then if it is also the same as a cell tower sending out, um, uh, you know, uh, transmitting and receiving, your body is becoming exactly the same thing. And actually it's doing that on its own, but most people never put it in perspective that our human body, our DNA is connected to, how the cells do what they do and how our body works as a system. And what's happening now that you understand that this resonance and signaling is going on to control the total development as a human being and that everything is vibrating at a unique set of frequencies that any manipulation in that sequence of our DNA actually changes the vibrational properties and destroys the resonance code that was created by God. In other words, you are like you are because God created you that way. In other words, even though humans look different on the outside, we all have this internal antenna located inside that pineal gland like a smartphone. And so that can all be tuned and carry the same frequency and allow you to connect to the same network. So vibrational frequencies and resonance from an outside source that can be converted into vibra- you know, vibrational information, like when God spoke things into existence, it's the same thing. You're using that vibrational sound to form information using like a biochemical information. And it can literally affect the DNA. And anytime that you have vibrational frequencies like sent from cell towers or low earth satellites, they can be used to target the vibrational field of the human body by connecting to the pineal gland through those microcrystal parts in there that's like an antenna. And so if you get that biological effect of that electromagnetic field on the body, this means that the human DNA can be affected externally. In other words, our DNA can be put into algorithms that can be targeted from the outside using electromagnetic waves. So if someone was able to obtain your DNA and convert your biochemical information into a wave formation, information like from these waves, and target you from outside your body using the electromagnetic resonance that only your biofuel would be attracted to it, and you would be the person affected by it. So your DNA is only, it's like a fingerprint. It is vibrating. You have your own sound. This is what worries me about people who have given their DNA anywhere to anyone that can Mm. utilize it because now the, the new oil for the world is human data. So that data and somebody getting your fingerprint can generate a resonance on your fingerprint and target you. Just like we get a cell phone call and a big, let's say, thousand people in the room, and your cell phone rings to your phone. Mm. They can ring to your pineal gland, and that just gives me, like, chill bumps. Because when I realize that, then all this coming together and why that's all important and how that connects us to the end of days is just riveting. Yes, absolutely. And, um, you know, 
people aren't very careful at all uh, with their DNA, and they don't understand how important um, just giving that away, you know, to get tests or, and I know that it ha has helped like a lot of people that are adopted. It's helped them to like find their real families and everything, but uh, there are sinister things going on in the world and there are, you know, evil is very organized and they've been looking after and seeking out DNA since Hitler's time, you know, with the world wars and all of that. And, um, there was a, an occult agenda behind some of that and as well. And so can you talk a little bit about Neuralink and uh, the efforts that they are, you know, trying to, as far as fusing humanity with AI? Well, that's what the whole intent will be, because that's how you're going to be able to control people that they cannot buy, sell or trade without this connecting mark that you can't get away from. In other words, mm -hmm. once they are able to connect to you and use a Neuralink again, you know, just what I just said, you've got the pineal gland inside of your head. So what do you do? You connect all of that up into Neuralink, which is then monitored by Starlink, which is in all the satellites that are in low Earth orbit. It's just like I said, that can be beamed directly to your DNA and you can be you will be affected by it. So, you know, we've seen movies in the past like The Matrix and things like that, where when somebody they got ready to turn you off, they just flip the switch. If you are connected to that kind of technology that I'm describing, that is not something in the future. We're talking about something that exists right now right. because yeah, your biofuel is you. Your DNA is singing. It is a fingerprint to you. And if you get connected to that neural link and you're broadcasting and receiving even greater with your antenna inside of your head, then those satellites are connecting no different than me getting a cell phone call in the middle of 100 million people. They're going to be able to target you and 100 million people because your your sound, your vibration of your DNA is your own phone number. And I know this might sound for some people, this is probably you've never heard anything like this. I was blown away by this capability because that means no place to run. No place to hide. And that's exactly what the beast mark is all about. It is connecting you to that artificial intelligence using that kind of um, capability with Neuralink, Starlink, and then saying, you know, we're going to make sure that if you buy, sell, or trade, it's you. In other words, you can't remove it from you because you are only you in your DNA. Your song cannot be made up, taken from you, cut out of you. It is literally you. And once that happens, there is no way if you say, I'm going to take that mark and you get that in your body like this with this DNA and utilizing it like that, you are absolutely allowing your DNA to be changed. And once it's cut and changed from what it originally was to connect to this artificial intelligence, you are no longer human. You are considered post-human. You're considered to be a transhuman. And everything that Klaus Schwab, the World Economic Forum, even Elon Musk will act like he's not a part of that. He was trained in every aspect of transhumanism by Klaus Schwab. So he is a person that was set up to do what he is doing to bring it all together. But they don't want everybody to know that. So they always like they're, they're at each other's odds with one another. They are not. They're from the same root on the same tree, except they're showing they can do this and this one can do that. And what's going to happen is they're going to use that technology to bring it right together and lock mankind down. And when you look at that, it is no different than returning mankind to the Tower of Babel. Mm -hmm. Because what happens is, is everybody is connected brain interfaces with their particular vibration that you can't get away from because it's you. And then it's through the Starlink satellites, no place to run, no place to hide. And then when they say, you know, either you take this or you don't take it, then it's your choice. You're going to either have to go to that to be able to live and get your money and get your uh, retirement right. and, and to get your food 
and, and medicine and whole nine yards, medicine. or you have a choice, don't take it and you die. They will yeah. kill you. Yeah, these are strangely odd times and things are accelerating quickly. Um, and so in, in your book and also in your personal feeling, Dr. Joy, what do you see coming on the horizon? Because um, things are definitely moving fast. Um, but for the listening audience, what kind of indicators, uh, signs should they be looking for? And I uh, know without a doubt that they should already be in preparations, you know, as far as just having, um, you know, some food and water, medical supplies, things of that nature, maybe even, you know, medicines, whatever, um, just maybe try to keep a, a surplus or a, a small stash of supply at, at your home. But um, uh, how do you see it playing out and coming down on the horizon? Well, I think the thing that I'm worried most about is there's no place to run, no place to hide, no way to get away from it. You are locked into a system that is literally is making us come to the end of days, just like scripture told us. I mean, we are we are literally living in the end of days when we are told that you're either going to have to take that beast mark or you're going to have to die for what you believe. Right. and that's where the worry is. I, you know, I know a lot of people say, well, you know, take money and put it in your mattress and buy gold, buy silver, uh-huh. put water up and all those kind of things. But, you know, Zen, when you look at it, we are told in Scripture as Christians that you stand strong up until the end of days. But the yeah. thing it tells you to not do, it says, do not ever take that take mark that of the mark. beast. Right. And if you do then you have opened the doorway into hell and that is where you're going to spend eternity. And now that I've been able to do this book, I'm showing you that the moment you take that beast mark and you become a transhuman, you get connected to artificial intelligence and they're giving you the promise of gaining a synthetic biological life through artificial intelligence to live forever in a mortal Mm. state. Be prepared that that is not the case. And they're going to make it believable. They're going to make it so perfect. And they're going to kind of force the issue because we can already look at Amazon One. That's one of those things that they're putting now. And they have it out where you take and to be able to go into a store, you put your hand, whole palm in this this little uh, thing. And what it does is it reads your palm and it reads everything about the lines on your palm and it reads even your um Uh, veins and arteries and when you put your hand in this amazon one uh, little contraption what it does is it locks in on who you are it becomes your identifying mark and if you go in to buy something in the store you don't have to go to a cash register there's no cash register when you walk in you use your palm and anything that you pick up and put into a bag it automatically bills you And it goes directly into your account there in a bank. And it starts removing. If you bought $50, it removes $50. It's in in real time. But there is no cashier. In other words, it's going just by your palm print. So they're already getting the technology out there instead of using your credit card. Because right now they'll say, well, you can use your credit card or you can use Amazon One. And most people are taking and putting their hands down in this little canister thing and letting it read it. And they can go in and do whatever their banking business and never use a credit card. So, you know, when we started out when I was young, you had cash. And then we went to checks. Uh And then we went to credit cards. And then we went to credit cards that we didn't have to pull this little thing back and forth. And we could just swipe them and and run them through it. And then we got to the point we could wave the, the credit card in front of it. Now they're preparing for the next step. And that is what Amazon One is all for, is to take away the credit card. So now you don't even need the credit card. All you need is your palm in that little thing. And anywhere you go, your palm print, your knowledge of who you are, is going along with your right hand. What are the odds that Scripture would tell us that that mark is going to become something in your right hand and in your forehead? And to me, the connection of them starting people right now to use your hand to buy, sell, or trade. We are just so close to the mark of the beast. We know that the Antichrist is going to just walk out into the, you know, the, the world in a quick way. 
Things are going to happen fast. We see all the other signs coming together. The end of days is upon us because it tells us that it's like a woman in travail in which all these signs are going to come together at the end of days. And instead of it being an earthquake over here and a tornado over there and a hurricane here and birds dying in China and whatever, it's like all those things are getting more and more and more all over the world and the signs are converging into a terrible storm that is beyond anything that humanity has ever seen. So we're already seeing the convergence of signs. And one of the things was Mm -hmm. is that we had to have the entire world know about, you know, Jesus. And once it was preached to the entire world, it says in Scripture, the end will come. Now the entire world has heard the word of Jesus. I'm talking about even in the lowest African nations where they have gone in and carried in these little receptors, which actually have Bible Scripture on them. They don't have to have batteries or anything. They are charged by the sun and they speak actually the Bible in the language of those people that are there. So the world itself now has heard the gospel. And that is what scripture says. Once that happens, the end will come. So, you know, I'm just waiting right now to see the Antichrist step on board. That's going to come. And that's already in its workings. I mean, there's no doubt in my mind that when King Charles takes his coronation, uh, oaths and everything, May the 6th, He is going to come in as defender of all faiths. And that's something that has never happened because their Anglican church that he should be over as defender of the Anglican church. He is now going to be defender of all faiths. And the fact that he has the red dragon uh, and over um, Wales that he used the red dragon in the past on his um, coat of arms. And then you've got Prince William, he's doing the Earth shot to save planet Earth using all the major organizations. Be prepared. The time is here. Hold on, Dr. Joy. We'll be right back, everyone, for a final. People say you, you have to have a lot of passion for what you're doing, and it's totally true. And the reason is uh, is because it's so hard that if you don't, any rational person would give up. You've got to find what you love. Uh, you can have a job, or you can have a career, or you can have a calling. And the best thing is to have a calling. You should truly follow your passion. If you're doing something and you're not in, interested or you have no passion for it, you, you really... Life is too short. You're going to fail. So you might as well take a chance on doing what you love. You've got to enjoy what you do every day. Find your passion. You find your passion. I was very, very lucky. I think it's important that you really like whatever you're doing. If you haven't found it yet, keep looking and don't settle. As with all matters of the heart, you'll know when you find it. And most important, have the courage to follow your heart and intuition. They somehow already know what you truly want to become. Hey everyone, it's Chris Gio, founder of Truth Frequency Radio and host of Beyond the Veil. The mainstream media and establishment are running scared right now, and they've prominently featured TruthFrequencyRadio.com as number 89 on the federal government's hit list, also known as the fake news list, which is essentially a list of sites slated for censorship on Facebook, YouTube, Google, and other social media. Now is the time for you to get involved. Share your favorite TFR shows far and wide on forums and social media. Tell your friends and family about your favorite shows. If you're a business owner, get in touch with us to feature your product or service right here on TFR. And if you haven't done so already, become a TFR supporter now and get unlimited commercial-free downloads in high quality. Visit truthfrequencyradio.com slash sign up. Thank you for making TFR the leader in independent and uncensored talk radio. Truth Frequency Radio, your protection from deception.
Once in a decade, a true story comes along that remembers the future. After six Amazon bestsellers, I have completed the epic Birth Trilogy, a true story of Earth. By reading the Birth Trilogy, you will journey with the characters from the origin of Earth to its final destiny in a white-knuckle ride that combines the intrigue of Tom Clancy with the epic scope of Prometheus and Interstellar. You will learn more about the purpose of life the mystery of death and the true nature of your soul than you thought possible. The Birth Trilogy is now available on Amazon and Kindle. The audio version is a free bonus when you buy the paperback, so even if you're not a great reader, don't worry about it. I read it for you. Use the Amazon app today and buy the Birth Trilogy, spelled B-E-A-R-T-H, or search for my name. I'm Brooks Agnew. You are now tuned into the truth frequency. Your protection from deception. T L R. Truth Frequency Radio. And in those days, there were giants in the land, and the sons of the angels of God looked upon the daughters of men and found them fair, and took of them wives, and their sons became alone great men of renown. So they have been mixing with us on a genetic level since the time of Enoch and Ezekiel's will. Here on Earth we're intrigued by the sun, moon, and stars and imagine that's got to be planets like ours so conceive of a face on the surface of Mars so in need of a meaning and purpose we lost. And indeed they believe that these might be our gods or that maybe with time we'll do right and evolve and eventually reach what they seek and then solve all the problems of man but they really don't know that they call and the works of our hands are but just filthy rags So we travel the lands to dig up our past Time elapses and with it all much of the facts I'm imagine that God's came in All right, welcome back everybody And uh, the show has flown by We are already at final segment, Dr. Joy And <laughs> I know there's still lots that you want to cover And so um, if you would, you know, bring forth, uh, you know, some of the m- most important aspects of the book and why people should read it and prepare themselves, uh, study it and, you know, get to really understand and know about those things that are coming. Well, I think that's most important that you really get an understanding of how the human body can be controlled. And I think that's the thing about the work that I've done in this particular book. It's very, very much involved with the scientific aspect of what your body is capable of doing in an intercellular way that can absolutely be uh, connected to from an outside source. And then you can be remotely controlled, just like you can control a TV or let's say a robot walking across the floor. I don't think ever has anybody gone to the extent that I've gone to try to show you how your body is set up just like a, a, a cellular network within yourself and how your DNA is controlling your body in such a way, just like cellular phones can contact a, a cell phone our cellular tower can find a cell phone anywhere that's near it or in a million mm-hmm. people. You, that number is your number. Right. We don't realize that we all have a number and our number is our vibratory patterns. And so the control of humanity using digital identification systems is collecting all your data. That means everything, your medical history, your work history, your personal finances, your social media, the purchases you make, your emotional states, your mental states, your religious status, you know, what kind of education, where your GP, in other words, GPS can locate you. This can locate you at all times because your DNA can be monitored 24-7. Uh, you know, I wanted to also um, bring forth a point. There was a, a show called Hannah that came out that was talking about um, them merging um, DNA from animals with um, humans in order to heighten their senses and to make super soldiers. And what they did is they took these kids at a very early age and began to uh, teach them, train them so that they would be assassins. And they would never question the people that they were sent to go and target. 
But what was very interesting about the show is that they showed um, how people that were being targeted, they it was at an early age before. Uh, and what they did is they collected the data of all of the, you know, the way that the patterns, the, the books that people read, and they um, looked into the future to see if these people would be against the New World Order and if they would become a problem, um, much like the divergence and that whole mini series about people that, you know, would fight against uh, the establishment and not go along and just to get along. And these people became targets for all these young kids uh, and they would assassinate purely innocent people. Uh, and especially at an early age of their life before they became a problem for the government. And so I think, you know, shows like that tell us something about who the enemy is. And, you know, especially with the, all that has come forth with the Patriot Act. And uh, it shows that, you know, Christians and patriots, um, people that we generally would consider good, you know, like, uh, uh, as far as those that support the Second Amendment and uh, conservatives, but yet, according to the state, these are the enemies of society and the people that are divergent. And they, these are the people that the government wants to come after. And well, the shadow government, and just like with what it said on the Georgia Guidestones, you know, they want to control, not even allowing people to have birth naturally but that they want to bring forth children through test tubes and in a controlled manner in the way that you know the, it was a uh, practice with the eugenics movement in nazi germany and the control of the state and children being born for the benefit of state and so um can you um, comment on those kind of things well, the thing about it is, if you look at them changing the gene expressions in humanity or like adding into like animals and things of that nature, there was one time that it was talked about in some of the things that they were going to use for plagues that they had actually used a type of uh, organism that was one that didn't die. In other words, it could regenerate itself. And so there was at one time there was a conversation being made that some of those pieces of that kind of animal are um, – I, I guess some kind of um, protozoa had been put into uh, certain medicines and that if it was infused into the body and got into the gene system in some way to use like a CRISPR technology where you would put that gene or match that uh, uh, animal with its unique to reproduce itself into the human DNA that you could literally start changing the gene expressions in the human body. Well, and there's a possibility to even do that even, even more simpler. You can use a certain kind of light therapy at certain wavelengths because sound and light can produce a harmony or a disharmony in the human body, depending on the frequency that's actually receiving in the environment. And, you know, there is even some degree of belief that if the soul interfaces with the physical body, that there is some kind of uh, frequency that our DNA is putting off and allows the human body to actually be made up of a physical body, a spiritual body, a soul, that kind of thing. So if they were able to go in and change something, it's, it's very possible that you could connect the minds of anyone that you manipulated using that kind of uh, technology through an availability of just no doing nothing but conventional techniques of communication like we do for the cell phones. In other words, if those people could be made into like Manchurian candidates or whatever, that you could right. use light and sound and you could use that mental telepathy to be the mode of communication because telepathy it can be actually a sound or a voice can be sent from one, like from a person that's using a certain kind of um, uh, apparatus to send that electromagnetic wave to change it into sound once it hits into your pineal gland. And you can be sitting at a table and if you're targeted, you will hear voices in your head telling you stuff. 
And you might ask somebody, did you hear that? They're not going to hear it. Again, it is actually being sent to you. It's targeting you just like a cell phone. So the manipulation of that body, our body's biofuel, is kind of like a dimensional portal in which you can be directly affected by something outside of your body through a vibrational signal that it's receiving. And, and, and you can't, you know, we can walk through electromagnetic waves all day long. We can't feel them. You can't see them. You can't hear them. You don't know it, but it can be affecting you bio- biologically to the point that it could be sending you information in your head. And I've always said that, you know, some of the Manchurian candidates that we've seen, I believe, in recent times, like some of the killings in the theaters and stuff like that, those people yeah. looked to me like they were absolutely brainwashed. Right. They would sit and they would have these stares. They would be like looking in, just like into dead space as if they were being robotically controlled. I really believe that was happening. I believe that that was some of the game playing that was being done right before our eyes to see if it could manifest itself. So you can imagine that there's nowhere to run and nowhere to hide. Your DNA is a temple of crystals that can be connected to just like those used for computers and smartphones. And so if you use the gene manipulation using like CRISPR technology to change your DNA resonance and signal those transmissions back and forth through something like Elon Musk with Neuralink and and using the Starlink satellites, it makes you a total transhuman. So that means, like I said earlier, that your God-created DNA, you know, is something that if you change it and you allow that to be changed, then you literally are stopping any aspect of you ever receiving your internal, I mean, your um, uh, ex- uh, eternal paradise. Your inheritance right. that God has given you is based on you being a human. <laughs> right. The moment that you become something non human or post human and this transhuman stuff, you are literally detaching yourself from the connection to God forever. There's no return. And there are uh, preachers out there right now, Zen, that are preaching. Oh, if, if, you know, if for some reason you, you take that mark, you know, God's going to forgive you. He's going to, he's not going to send you to hell. There's no such thing as hell. He'll forgive you. He loves everybody. And all this big push about God gets us, you know, Jesus gets Uh us. It doesn't matter if you sin or do whatever you let your hair down. Jesus let his hair down. This being pushed to make people believe it's okay to take this mark of the beast. They are preparing people right now to accept the mark of the beast. And if for some reason, if anything goes wrong and you don't, you wish you hadn't taken it, he's going to let you like reverse it. I am just telling you from this book, you can't reverse it. You are toast. And that's why I feel like this book is so important for people to read because it's going to teach you about this technology and how it's going to be made to look like something so perfect. And if you don't take it in the end and you've got grandchildren screaming, mama or grandpa or whoever, take it. Yeah. We can live forever and do this and be together forever and ever and ever. Or you got to walk over there and have your head cut off at a guillotine. Most people then are going to choose the mark. And yeah. I'm just like, this book is something you need to sit down. You need to read. You need to talk to your family members and those you love to avoid doing that. Because once you, once you take that mark, it's over. It's you over, are right. toast. You are toast. You are headed for the gates of hell faster than you can even imagine. And there is no return. There's no forgiveness for it. Scripture, when it tells you there's no forgiveness, there is no forgiveness. So do not listen to any pastor that's claiming that, any scientist that's you know claiming that. It, the Antichrist is going to claim it's the greatest thing since peanut butter. That it's going to look like you can do all things. It's no different than the technology we use in our homes now to turn up our air conditioning at a distance, to wash our clothes away from the house, to turn on our, you know, whatever under 5G technology. It's all at the the click of a little button. It makes it so easy, so convenient. They are going to push that for you because this Amazon one is making it easy. You don't even have to take a a pocketbook with you anywhere. You don't have to take a wallet with you anywhere. All you got to do is take your right hand and stick it in that little cradle 
and it takes care of anything you need. You can go down to the bank, you can buy whatever you need, you can get your gas, whatever. Just put your little hand right there, that little palm right in that little right hand, right in that little cradle. It takes care of everything. We are there, Zen. We are at the end of days. It's just a matter of time. Like I'm telling everybody in this book, the technology, the science, everything is in order. Right, right. Yes, I agree with you, Dr. Joy. Things are accelerating so quick. I mean, even just a couple of years ago with the whole uh, appearance of C-19, nobody nobody was expecting that. And yet, you know, uh, you had written about some of these things um, coming. And Scripture tells us, you know, that there would be famines and pestilences and pandemics and earthquakes and diverse places and wars and rumors of wars and all of these kinds of things. And we are no doubt the fig tree generation. I uh, wanted to ask you this as well, Dr. Joy, and get you to comment on this. And uh, with regard to the, you know, the um, occultic leanings of why certain countries are targeted for war, because um, it seems like Iraq, after the discovery of, so it was either Gilgamesh or, or Nimrod's tomb that there was a push for America to get into Iraq to invade it quickly. And the first place they went is to Babylon and also to the museums to secure the Sumerian, uh, the cuneiform, the artifacts. And, and it seems like also here in the Crimea, there was a discovery of very ancient um, pyramids and some are said to be the oldest in the world and the largest and also that these pyramids were covered over by earth that they had been buried possibly with you know the flood uh, or who, who knows but uh, these pyramids after their discovery Russia you know quickly invaded and targeted the Crimea and um, so there seems to be uh, the elites are going after the DNA of what seems to be the ancient giants and uh, those that were born of the demigods, you know, the fallen angels mating with the daughters of Cain. Um, can you comment on that and the reason why I, do you think it's connected to uh, super soldier technology, to um, you know, what, what are the specific reasons for uh, them doing this and, you know, the, seeking out that ancient knowledge? Well, I think that those, uh, particularly those cuneiforms that try to say that the uh, Anunnaki came down from the heavens to earth and supposedly were the instigators of establishing uh, civilization there in Mesopotamia, in those particular areas that they want to show one day when they have an antichrist in power, and especially the fallen angels that are flying around in these unidentified aerial phenomena situations that our government clearly is saying is out there, and they're increasing daily in great proportions, and that we don't really know who it is. It doesn't seem to be an ally, but it could it be an adversary? Well, if it was an adversary for the United States and it was China or Russia, they would already own us. So right. something is in our airspaces that our uh, government is clearly having on TV the people from the Pentagon and other areas of the top levels of our military um, uh, echelon trying to explain that we don't they don't know how or what the propulsion of these particular things and crafts are but that they are there they are real that there's a lot of them even when norad was put on notice about the chinese so-called balloons that were doing surveillance right. are you kidding me why would china or russia need a stupid balloon <laughs> when they would have that kind of technology so it tells right. us that that technology is being done by something other than what is human because if it was human because of the people and the way humans are somebody would want to rule the world and they would use it to their advantage yes. so i i can clearly think that they want to be able to 
to show us that these things were here in the beginning. So they have secured all the Babylonian artifacts because what we know from the architectural designs and the way that they carved those individuals, even the ones that came out of the oceans, were actually on one side scaled and the other side human. And that they were the Anunnaki who came from heaven to earth. And they're going to show once the Antichrist gets here that those things are going to manifest. They're going to be a part of it. That is the opening of the abyss. And what's going to happen once those people who take the mark of the beast change their bodies from being human into transhumans, posthumans, then they're going to break out in these boils that are probably worse than anything with like leprosy. It is going to be something that is going to go from the first actual plague all the way to the end of days that those people are going to suffer. And it says it's a grievous, noisome suffering that those people are going to experience. So it is all part of the end of days. And I think that just like I believe that Shroud of Turin is going to be used to prove who the Antichrist is. I believe that those uh, artifacts that were taken and, and hidden, uh, showing all about uh, Babylonian Nimrod, that group of individuals is real. And they're going to show it that that's them returning to manifest with mankind and and people are going to be afraid and they're not going to understand and out of fear sometimes there's got to be a crisis and i know that you know the crisis that we just went through for the last couple of years how it changed the world we will never go back to how we once were so can you imagine any kind of crisis right now if these things were to manifest in our skies and nobody knows what they are and our government really can't protect us because there are perfect cases of these things getting over our missile silos and shutting down our nuclear capability. Yes. And if that's the case, we can't even fire against them. And right. there are no there are no people in the military saying that they can even come close to them. They can't maneuver like them. They've never seen anything like it. The propulsion is not like what we use today. So if you look at it, you can see how all these little things are being put in place. So when they decide to show themselves, it will literally be a takeover. And I tell you, it is it is coming. I mean, we, you and I have been preaching this for a very, right. very long time. We've been watching these things and these signs come together. And that's one thing about it. When I end this book, I've got every one of those signs converged in this beast mark to let you know that we are Almost to this point. I mean, it is right. just seconds away from midnight. I mean, we are yes. that close to seeing everything in Scripture totally fulfilled. And yeah. you and I have been trying to explain this was coming. And right. people, like you said in the beginning, when we started talking about all this, they laughed and made whatever. But I'm going to tell you now, it is not conspiracy. And you, right. you, we can prove it with science and religion and extra books outside of the Bible, that what's been told to a humanity for the longest is going to end up with an end of days just like the Bible says. It's not symbolic. It's not out there a thousand years from us. It is right here, right now. Never in our human history have we ever been to the place that we are right now. Never. Where we would have to go under digital currency. Once we go into digital currency, the, the digital dollar is already being utilized. All these other countries are starting to manifest with their own cryptocurrencies. Once you cannot get your hands on money, like with that Amazon one, there is no exchange of money. You don't have any dollars in your pocket. You don't have any quarters to go get. You don't have any gold to buy, sell, or trade with. It is all in cyberspace. It's controlled by the people who will own you if you take that mark of the beast. Uh-huh. Yeah, it reminds me of that um, Sandra Bullock movie, The Net, when they, you know, completely wiped out her. That's uh, right. Everything, you know, and they controlled that. They can delete you if they want to and leave you with nothing, you know, and you can't buy, sell, or trade. That's or, right. Or- Did you? That's right. Digital transactions, they can document, track it, all your, actually all your transactions at once combined with that control digital currency. And that means that you have no ability to stop them from doing what they're doing. They can block your transactions, just like with me trying to do things on Facebook, send out stuff. They block me. 
you can't get on there, you can't get off there, you can't get past the surveillance. They control the grid. They enforce right. the rules, and they'll enforce those rules concerning your money that they're going to dictate how it's going to be spent, when it's going to be spent. And it, in other words, if you don't do exactly what they say, you don't survive with no money, with no ability to buy, sell, or trade. Right. Yeah, that is, uh, that's exactly where we are. Uh, and already, you know, we see them deleting messages, deleting certain videos, deleting articles, um, putting up disinformation, supporting the propaganda, and uh, it's all it's all censored already. Uh, but Dr. Joy, we have just like three minutes remaining. Want to give you a chance for a final comment, and also please mention again your websites and uh, social contacts. Well, my biggest reason for doing what I do is because I love my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and I Amen. don't want to see anybody go to hell. Uh, this is that my whole work, every book I've ever written is to save somebody's soul. I mean, it's like, but wake up. If you've got a question. You can't answer these questions. These questions are keeping you from choosing Jesus. Then call me. Whatever I can do to help you see that it's really real, that we are not just living something. This is a plan. And God loves his children, but he expects you to follow his book. And if you don't do it, Satan is going to confuse you. He's going to use any kind of tricks he can do to get you off center and away from God's uh path for you to go into your inheritance in paradise. If he can fool you into believing what he has is better, just like he did in Adam and Eve, he took them outside of their paradise. He destroyed Adam and Eve's paradise. If right. you let him do the same thing, he's going to do that to you. And so this thought process that God loves everybody and he's just, you know, he gets us and he's going to let everything slide. That is false teaching. And in the end of days, we're told to be aware that Satan is going to play this game because he's going to look good. He's going to look charismatic. He's going to look like he's going to give you everything you need. He is a lying trickster, and all he wants is to take your soul forever into eternity. Now, I'm going to say, nobody is going to end up like not existing anymore. When you are raised to go before the white, great white throne, you are going to be in a resurrected body. That means that you will never die. You will live forever in a hell fire that does not consume you. You will literally burn over and over and over again. Do not choose Satan. Whatever you're doing tonight is not worth your eternity if you're doing wrong. I don't care what it is. If it's money, sex, whatever, whatever's out there, drugs, alcohol, whatever it is, it is not worth your eternity in heaven. Get rid of those things that are sin in your life because it's like the 10 virgins. Five knew about it, but they didn't keep their oil lamp slipped. Five knew about it and they kept it and they made it into heaven. Choose Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Dr. Joy. We appreciate Thank you, all of sin. you. See you at the conference. Be blessed all. Good night. Shalom. On May 26 through 28, 2023, Sacred Word Revealed comes to Atlanta, Georgia. Purpose to unveil esoteric controversies. Conflicts abound in this final generation. After many millennia of deceptive propaganda replacing truth, that's why we must join together as a remnant to sharpen one another as iron sharpeneth iron. To test all things and to declare together openly the Messiah is Adonai. Get your tickets now at sacredwordrevealed.com and join us for another exciting, rejuvenating, and challenging weekend of worship, fellowship, and discussion with the truth-seeking community. Thank you, everybody, for joining us for this video and this broadcast. We appreciate all of you, and thank you for your patronage. Please do like and subscribe and share with your friends. God bless all of you in your seeking.